Cam yeah, Taylor. Cam Taylor. Taylor. Okay. Taylor's arm. Okay, Cam and Clayton's arm. You had a meeting yesterday, or you have another morning? Oh, you already had one. Oh, my goodness. Hey, well, you make good use of it. I did. This is very efficient. Very efficient use. How convenient. So how long does it take to get down there? It depends on who's driving. Oh. Who was driving? About four and a half, five hours. I did. I did. Now my husband really can't drive anymore. Oh. Christine, are you ready? Ten of them driving. Let's go. Oh, okay. One of those. Good morning. It's um, it's ten o'clock, and today is June the first. This is our regular meeting of the Educational Broadcasting Authority. Uh, we are here at 600 Capitol Street. Uh, one member, uh, Taylor Hood, is on the phone joining us, as is Clayton Birch, and and the remainder of the table here is consists of all the members of. Um, of the Education Broadcasting Authority. And just so that everybody will know who is present, um, Greg, would you start out just announce your name? We'll run around the table so everybody will know who is here. Greg Thomas. Daniel Wall. Tom Sussman. Butch Antolini. Randall Reed Smith. Bill File. Mike Farrell. Errol Rotrock. Nancy White. Frank Wood. Christina Dodd. Thank you. And as I stated, uh, Taylor Hood is on the phone, as is Clayton Birch. And good morning to you, gentlemen. Uh, we will follow the agenda that was uh, previously furnished each member of the EBA, and the first item will be to approve the minutes. We have two. So moved. Okay. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> okay, we're going to move quickly. Uh, we have two sets of minutes. Does your motion does your motion cover both sets of minutes? Yes, and dispense with the reading of the minutes. Very well. good. Do we have a second to the motion? Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed likewise. The minutes are approved. Uh, next item will be Tammy Treadway, the financials. Tammy, I understand you are on the phone. Yes, I am. I'm at the uh, PBMA conference learning how to fill out all the CPB reports again. So um, you should have your financial report there in front of you. Um, if you'd like to look over it and if you have any questions, it it is the April 30th report. And um, at our last meeting, I presented the March 31st report. So there's not a lot of difference. Okay, so it's just basically one month that's being... Yes, sir. Being added. Does anybody have any questions of if you had an opportunity to review the, the report in front of you? Does anybody have any questions regarding that? If not, I would ask for a motion so to moved. accept. We have a, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. All, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Those the same sign. It is approved. We're going to be out of here about 10 15. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you're not. <laughs> uh, next, Brian Gallagher, chair of the Friends of Public Broadcasting. Brian? Welcome to the brief. Good morning, everyone. The elections to the Friends Board uh, have concluded last night, so we'll know the results. The nominations committee is supposed to meet on Thursday or Friday, so we should know the new results. I'm not here next meeting. You'll know what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, we only had... Two candidates file in Charleston, and surprisingly, so we didn't have to have an election yet, so we got to the people for a little while. We didn't think in the biggest market we were going to have enough candidates. We've been dealing with a lot of 10% requests to fund different things, so uh, we're going to fund a picnic for staff. Hopefully, we'll be able to, to get them a uh, lease or something that goes along with that. We uh, spent some money on education and training for all the new staff to get them up to speed, and I think Tammy's one of the folks that's business to help to get up to speed as a result of the result request because we want to make sure we get everybody up to speed as quickly as possible so uh, they can get the ground running. We've got a number of things, a new educational program that Maggie's brought to us that uh, she's looking at for Blue um, County. We're still examining what we do this, but it would be sort of a cutting edge thing to, to train three preschoolers to improve their literacy. That and hopefully that will be a pilot project that we can then staff us, ramp up, and get a massive grant to spend it in it. Make that work too. Uh, we've also purchased a number of equipment, 
number of pieces of equipment on an emergency basis that were stuff crisis happened and we got a number of those things. And we as a as the friends board recommended the EVA look at an establishing an amortization amortization schedule so we have a regular rotation of how we replace that equipment for emergency basis. We've also got uh, we're underwriting some marketing events so we're going to be going to um, different fairs and festivals around the state. We were already at Vandalia. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing a lot of that because we spend a lot of time talking to each other about how good we are. And we are good, but we need to talk to people who don't know about us. And one way to get to them is for people that are going to go out to these various <coughs> festivals and hopefully the friends around the state will get them energized to meet those meetings and, and help staff with those various areas so we're going to be buying some, some stuff that we can use on a rotating basis and plan on trying to do this at least every other year, if not every year. All of our committees have been appointed. We're just waiting for the new staff to get up to speed to assist them with what they're doing. And uh, they're locked and loaded and ready to go. And we're working on the UN closing right now. To come with some Any questions? Any questions to Brian? Good night. Thank you, Brian. Is that fast enough? <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, Ted Arnbrecht, if you give your report on the foundation, please. <clears throat> the uh, first foundation investment committee met yesterday, and uh, we're just as bad as the market. It's <laughs> very close in our percent. We've made a few adjustments, but uh, uh, I uh, hope everything turns around and gets going in the right direction. We also had a meeting uh, earlier in the month, May with uh, Nina, our uh, Cargill Foundation representative. It was really the first time that uh, our new head of that program, Mariko uh, uh, Valdez, made a report. It was an excellent report. The uh, foundation is going to repeat much of that for those members who have been That's extremely, an extremely exciting program. I hope you all follow it uh, uh, as you listen to public radio. Uh, the thing that was very encouraging was that uh, the Cargill people were amazed at the job that America was doing after such a short time uh, on the program. So we have every anticipation that uh, they will be uh, very understanding in the changes that we'll be making uh, in terms of programming, uh, wholeheartedly support, as I've reported to you all in the past. This is a foundation <clears throat> that really cares how you spend their money. Uh, any changes in the budget, any changes in the methods uh, that we use, uh, we communicate with them and uh, they approve them. But more than approving, they've been totally supportive. So um, I hope you all will say hello to America if you haven't met him. Uh, and congratulate him on that program. Any questions for me? That's a report to the Thank you, Ted. Appreciate it. Uh, <clears throat> next, we'll move into old business. Does anyone have any old business they would like to bring up? And Danielle, has there been any? We, we do. I, I, we have some dates from Nancy. Uh, I, I need to get those over to you and you all. So uh, I have some dates on that, and we're going to have our, our meeting coming up soon. I wanted to have those okay. dates first to schedule uh, the initial fundraising. And once we have that date, we'll get it locked in. We'll get it out to everybody. So they can okay, the great. And we're talking about the 40th anniversary celebration of Mountain Stage. Thank you, Daniel. What general framework are you talking well, there, there, The dates I asked her for were April and May <coughs> last year. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of this time frame on a weekday, uh, unless the folks think otherwise. But I, they're pretty booked up for weddings, and so weekdays were a little more available. And given the crowd that we're looking at, a lot of weekday would be fine. Good. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. You're welcome. If you'll discuss the venues, what you can use us for free.
probably four times. That's right. Any, uh, anybody else have old business to be brought up? If not, we'll have uh, new business. Uh, Carol, would you please make a report from the nominating committee? The nominating committee of Nancy White, Tom Sussman, and I have met, and we have secured uh, Bill File and Mike Farrell, Mike Bill to be chairman, and Mike to be vice chairman of the EBA for this coming year. Thank you, Carol. Uh, do we have a motion to, to so move? All in favor of that? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, appreciate Thank you. it, Carol. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for, for your confidence here. Uh, the next would be uh, the executive director's report, Butch Annalini. And let me first state that this is Butch's first meeting as the executive director. As you know, <laughs> welcome you, and we're excited to, to have you in this position, Butch. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning to everyone. It's good to see everybody here at 600 Capitol Street today. Um, we've been busy here at West Virginia Public Broadcasting since we last met on April 6th, and the board's obviously been busy as well, and I want to thank you all for removing my interim tag a few weeks ago while I was attending the uh, PBS National Meeting of General Managers in Washington, D.C. Your decision and vote of confidence in what this team at West Virginia Public Broadcasting is doing not only provides us affirmation of the path we are on, but it also gives us the go-ahead on mapping out the future for the Educational Broadcasting Authority in West Virginia. With all of our major department director positions now filled and just two staff vacancies at the present time, we can now concentrate on both short and long-term planning. When we meet again in 90 days, you can expect to hear specific details on what those plans are. Today, I will be introducing you to some of our newest employees, and you will be hearing from each of our department heads as to what we're doing here at West Virginia Public Broadcasting right now. So, um, uh, first, I would like to um, introduce you to our new uh, chief engineer and director of engineering. Um, we're excited to have uh, to have this young man with us, and um, Tyler Garner's been on the job about three weeks. And uh, Tyler, if you would uh, just stand up so everybody can can see you real quick. Um, he's also, if I have any problems in the building, I just call him. As you can tell, he's he's a, he's a big boy. So um, anyway, uh, what I'd like to do um, uh, right now is go ahead and have Tyler give you a brief report on on engineering, and um, then we'll go go forward with the other department heads. So Tyler, do you want me to? Please. Okay. Well, thank you all for bringing me up all the way back to West Virginia from Oklahoma. Uh, good to be back on the East Coast, back in the mountains. As Butch has said, we have a lot of planning to do. Uh, I've been on the job for about three weeks and I've had a chance to see about 50% of our sites. Uh, and each site needs the pleasure of work. Uh, we're slightly short staff, so we've got some engineering positions to fill. Quite a bit of planning to do and a lot of upgrades. But uh, I have a feeling once we're done with those upgrades, the system will run a lot smoother, we'll have faster reaction times, less downtimes, and overall just smoother operations. So, we can always go into more detail if you like, but that's kind of the general overview of what we're looking at just in the short time that I've been here. Tyler, talk to us about the security of our sites given the damage that occurred earlier this year. Well, is how you're going to work towards that, what that will entail. Yeah, so as some of you know, Garfield has been a prime target for thieves. Uh, it's the third or fourth time that they have robbed us of copper and precious metals. So I decided to uh, be a little bit stubborn. Uh, we're going to put lay in concrete uh, about four to six inches thick on top of our copper. Uh, each time we have to replace that, we're looking at almost a $40,000 bill um, and a lot of man hours and time that I've got to pull away from other, other jobs. So I'm going to be a little more stubborn than the thieves. Uh, if i got to sit out there with the ghillie suit and catch me in the act of them. But we'll also be adding security cameras to all of our sites, motion detection, lighting, better fencing, and overall just locking down the security of not only our remote sites, 
but even our buildings here, as uh, an attack has gone up around the country. It's time to secure our stuff. So, Are you going to do the cement on the other sites also or not? Depending on the site what's needed. I mean, concrete is very expensive. We're also trying to get concrete up and around the 4,000 feet tall isn't an easy task, but if we have repeat offending sites, absolutely. We have to do something. If we, our tower gets struck by lightning, we run the risk of losing everything on the tower. And that's millions of dollars that I'm sure our insurance would not like to spend. So, so they think the grounding system? Or what are they? Yeah, they're digging down about a half a foot. This will be the third time they've done it. I went and inspected the site two days later. I got a call that they did it again. So these guys know our sites. Now, I believe, brought in themselves to PD on this. Right. So it'll be a little bit of a group effort and a little bit of work to keep our sites from getting robbed. But my goal is to catch the act, catch them in the act with security cameras and uh, prosecute to the full extent of the law. So it's time to stop robbing. I appreciate that, Tom. It does. And the expense and also the integrity of the system and the delivery of what we have to deliver, my concern was we can't keep doing temporary fixes and continue to be a target. You've got to stand up and you've got to do what it takes to shut them down. And good luck in catching them, but if we have a security system, uh, then that's a good step in that direction. My side is also, my goal is to make the side look in a way that they want to go hit somebody else's side, not ours. Good. So our, we're going to raise our standards uh, to an excellent standard. We're not always going to hit that, but do money, time, people. But the goal is to get as close as we possibly can. So. We also share many of our sites with uh, EMS and and we are a significant part of the state interoperable radio network. So um, as we move forward the rest of this summer, um, you know, we're, we'll be meeting with them as well. You know, it was your first day on the job that we went to Garfield Street. I was with him. And like you said, two days later, they've been back in there again. So. Um, we will get that site secure, and we're going to secure all of our sites. It's just, uh, it just makes sense, and, and, and we have to have that. Uh, like you said, in some of the locations, you know, Garfield Street, it'll be easy, easy enough to get, uh, to get concrete up there. Some of our other locations might not be that simple, but we are going to secure all of the sites. We have roughly 30 sites across the state. Some of them are 4,000 feet up with winding roads. It's basically a muddy trip when we get to go, which I love. But uh, <laughs> I'd like to turn our sites and, and travel into a lot safer uh, for our engineers and IT personnel to have to go up there. The sites are somewhat dangerous, uh, with a lot of drop offs, a lot of cliffs, uh, road washouts. So we've got to work on transportation uh, first up to get it there. Maybe in the next meeting you could educate all of us as to what it is you're confronting so that we have an appreciation and there are times when the public and our constituents want to talk to us and the better educated we are, the better we can respond and more accurately. Thank you for accepting this job. I think we made the right choice. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tyler. Christy Mori.
is our new uh, marketing director. Christy's been busy already, as you heard, we were at Vandalia, but we have plans um, uh, for the rest of the summer and fall to get out at various locations across the state, but uh, I want to introduce you to Christy and, and have her tell you a little bit about uh, what she's been doing in the three weeks she's been here. Sure. Uh, my name is Christy Morey. Uh, proud to say I'm a native of West Virginia and uh, working in this, with this organization, being part of this organization, uh, really uh, just warms my heart and I couldn't be happier to be here. Um, since I came on board, we kind of looked at different ways uh, in the brief time I've been here, ways that we can align our efforts between membership and education um, and all the organizations in the building and how we can best um, uh, represent the organization to the outside because we all know we've been locked down for two years. And so um, uh, thank you, Curator, and then the team at uh, Culture and History. They were wonderful to work with. And so the past couple of days at Vandalia, one thing we learned is that people love public broadcasting and they want to tell you how much they love public broadcasting. Um, so I, I kind of shared with, with some of the staff, it's like, you know, if you get the opportunity to come out and join us at a table and interact with the public, um, you walk away feeling not only proud about the organization you work for, but really a renewed spirit of, of why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and so that's kind of the plan, really. Some of the events will take us um, hopefully around the state, um, meet some new faces, and again, just really kind of aligning our marketing efforts and putting ourselves um, back out in the spotlight. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Christy. Any well, questions for Christy? Christy, I have a comment. I think as you are doing uh, what I'll call the tour of West Virginia, you have an opportunity to get some tape of people who like and are enthusiastic and almost like that face in the crowd, 10-second uh, clip, 15-second clip, that we can promote ourselves because there are days and times when uh, you know it gets a little cloudy and a little dark, and we want everybody to remember how enthusiastic they are, and particularly with the new management, the number of people we replaced. Uh, the familiar names are not here, but the product is, and uh, I think to the extent that you become that stage master who can bring that message forward and provide that to the production people here. I think that'd be beneficial. Absolutely. It was uh, wonderful to see that these weren't only um, your long-term listeners and long-term viewers, these were younger people, were people in their, in their 20s and even younger coming to the table and talking about their experience. So, good, good. <laughs> Could you send us a schedule of where you're going to be when, and if we're in the area, then maybe we can stop by. Absolutely, we'll be sharing that. And we'll include that could include that in the weekly newsletter. Okay. So it's out there. Okay. Okay. This might be good to bring up now. Uh, at at uh, Arts, Culture, History, we house the American 250th Commission, which you know, four years we're celebrating the 250th birthday of America. And it'd be great. We need. We're putting this meeting. We're having. We're going to create subcommittees. It'd be nice if somebody from EBA would be on that, and it would be great to do this little tour thing to add something about that to it. And uh, so that. And then also, uh, we're putting together uh, a book. The kids are going to do. It'd be great if we could do some type of tour going to high schools to get kids involved with that too as well. And thank you for covering Vandalia. And if, for those of you who don't know, Mountain Stage was one of the recipients of the Vandalia Award this year. And a lot of people were very, very excited about that. And at Vandalia, I had several people say, how can we get Mountain Stage back on television? Uh, they like that it's on you know, radio, but they would like to see it on television again. So whatever we have to do to do that. Okay? Any other questions for Christy? Thank you, Christy. Eddie Eisen, our Chief Executive Officer, or our Chief Operating Officer, he is the Chief Executive Officer. <laughs> <laughs> He's new to PBS. Um, uh, I hope, you know, when I walked in October 19th, I said Eddie was a little, uh, 
was a little nervous and seemed a little overwhelmed, and I know why now uh, very well. And um, you know, he filled a lot of gaps, and I hope that now you're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not, and it's not a freight train. <laughs> so uh, Eddie, Eddie's going to talk to us um, a little bit about programming, yeah. radio, and TV. And he'll also uh, give you the update on our video production. Yeah. And um, hopefully it'll be the last time for a long time because our new director of video production will be here the first week of July. Yeah. And when we meet in, in September, uh, Chris Barnhart will give that report. And that's, that's another one that you can check off the list, Eddie. Yes, so. I'll be glad. Yes. <laughs> and I'm enjoying all the new staff that keep coming on board. They, they have a really great energy, as you've been able to tell from Tyler and Christy. Um, there, there are not many changes coming up in programming at this time um, in terms of what we consider traditional programming and costs are pro it's normal cost increase uh, this year of about 3% with some distributors. Some distributors are remaining flat, so we're not seeing any increase in cost to bring you programming. A, a couple of things that I do want to point out. Um, is, is um, that video production is continuing with the second part of the Communities and Schools project. So we'll have a 30-minute documentary coming up later this year about therapy dogs in the future. And they're also working on year two of The Future is You with Emily Calandrelli. And they're doing a focus this year on um, aerodynamics and robotics um, and with a focus specifically on, on young women uh, entering into these fields. But the big thing I want to talk about is the continuing change of, broad, of the broadcast industry. And, and Butch, he was at the PBS uh, meeting with general managers, and they talked about it there. And it's about how terrestrial broadcast is slowly going. It's flat now. It's going to slowly be overtaken by streaming. Um, and, um, you know, in the state, you know, we're looking at broadband. and. Broadcast is real important here at the moment. We do know the future is there, so we're preparing for that. And one of the big things we're doing this summer, we're working with PBS Digital, and by probably the end of the summer, we will be able to live stream our actual local channel on YouTube TV and on the PBS Passport system. What you will see now if you subscribe to YouTube TV, TV instead of um, a cable is a national PBS feed with their branding on it. So it's really not the local station yet, but that is coming later this year, and we're real excited about that as we continue moving forward in the change of, of technology here. And I just want to end really quickly. Um, uh, Christy was talking about Vandalia and talking about the people who came to talk to us and about the programming that we provide. There was a high school kid. He just got out of high school. He just graduated. <laughs> he actually listens to classical music. He talked to me about Matt Jackford, and he would tell me how much he misses Frank Sowers, who retired. And he said, he, when he got his first debit card, he made a $20 donation to West Virginia Public Broadcasting. And those are the kinds of stories that really inspire do you have any questions? Yeah, what do you mean that he actually was at the class? <laughs> <laughs> what is, what's wrong with classical well, music? No, we, yes, we you know the greatest <laughs> operatic voice of last century came out of West Virginia. So we had this misconception about who listens to classical music. We can, we, can, well, we think it's an older audience only. I can give you therapy on that. <laughs> so this student is actually going to Marshall next semester. He's going to study composition. Good. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we inspire him, you know, with his uh, with his career choice, and we don't often hear Actually. that from a high school team, from a high school. Team. I would say that would be yeah. the, that's the exception. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, quick question. Uh huh. So we, as I understand it, we have three or four different TV channels. That is correct. Some are broadcast, some are cable. I guess only. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, all of our all of our channels are broadcast. Uh, the West Virginia channel is. is only carried by some cable systems, but all of them are over the air. Isn't it possible, you know, in the next month or so, we really would like to get a definition of what each of those channels are supposed to do. Yeah, that'd be Certainly. So that we could know that, so we understand the channel, the, the communication right. channel, and what that definition is. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you quickly right now. So our main broadcast is, is an actual, is their PBS affiliation. So it's 90% PBS, and then we have local content. First in there with Val is also well. 
the break this year. Our secondary channel is the West Virginia channel, and we have a national world feed with documentaries, but we break in with um, you know, local content, including live streams that we do from the Pulitzer Center, um, legislative coverage, live floor sessions, et cetera. And we also air some of our archived West Virginia documentaries, which is why we brand it the West Virginia channel. And our third is a 24-7 PBS Kids channel. Is there any way on the West Virginia channel that if you had documentary folks who have documentaries to submit? Yes. Because some of the stuff is well, yeah, we do, we actually do that. I'm working with two independent producers right now. Um, I'm, I'm reviewing their work, and we also are getting things um, um, from other parts of the state, and, and um, it's not just archive material, but we're getting some new documentaries as well that people work on, because we're not the only people who produce things, and we, re we recognize that. So we do work with independent producers to allow them a, a way to show their work, um, you know, outside of just film sets. Mm -hmm. I have two things. Uh -huh. uh, Ambassadors Camp is coming up, and uh, we've already had uh, kids ask if they can do their that little two-hour internship down here that they we do every year with Ambassadors Camp. Okay. And, okay. Are you the person I talked to about that? Um, you, you can. Well, because okay. they're interested in te the television part. Okay. Okay. And then the other thing is on June 20th, if you guys will be in the building, for that, the governor will be there. There's some great events planned. The governor, and first lady, have a cake contest. We're going to have an official West Virginia birthday cake. Uh, we're doing a Golden Horseshoe reunion, and we're doing from two to five on that day. We're doing a uh, West Virginia State History Bowl Legends tournament, and you all okay. always live stream that. Okay. If you know, do I talk to you about those? Yeah, things? that's okay. Definitely. So if we could sit down and get that, I think that's everything. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, oh, hey, there's. Go ahead. And thank you again for Lawrence Welk. I had coffee with my brother this morning, and he loves Lawrence Welk, and I hope the numbers are good. Well, I'll get my first numbers next month. Okay. Thank you. All right. There could be an opportunity for you. I'd like you to contact Tara Beth Hyndman at Marshall. She's in the Harless Center in the School of Education. Uh-huh. I'm vice chairman of the Harless Hall of Fame, and we inducted Dolly Parton into the Hall of Fame uh, for her Imagination Library. Mm -hmm. She's coming to Charleston. She's <laughs> going to. We're going to be at the Clay Center on August 9th. Yeah, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about that yet. Okay, <laughs> have you got already done? Have you got something going? Yes, yes we, we do. do. Okay, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure because we were asked uh, yesterday to keep it under wraps. But okay. it, it, <laughs> it, it's going to be a special event. But, yeah, uh, uh, we we are being involved with that. Good. I just want to make sure we're going to be live streaming, and we, and we've requested from the Dollywood Foundation to be actually doing a live broadcast. Yes. Yeah. So just so you know, they they have to give us the go ahead on I know. the live they broadcast. Have to Everything is just their way, but she puts out, at her expense, five million books a month worldwide, six countries, to kids ages birth to uh, 10, 11, 12. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're excited to be involved with that. Yes, good. I just want to make sure. Thank you. And one more thing, Eddie, because I had a legislature ask me, a legislator asked me about legislature today. Uh -huh. was very disappointed. It's only once a week. It's and correct me. The week next next, that's what I told him. I just want to make sure I did the yes, right thing. You did. Yes. Okay, and everybody needs to start telling that and spreading the word. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Eddie. Um, Adam Harris. Adam, tell us about Vandalia and all the other great things that are happening right now with Mountain State. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate everybody's help and dedication to the organization. Uh, as the curator mentioned, we were honored with the state's most prestigious folk life award, the Vandalia Award. We were the 50th, among the 50th recipients on Friday evening, and so appreciate that honor. Larry, myself, and members of the Mountain Stage Band were there to uh, receive that recognition, and uh, it was wonderful. And I've heard uh, nothing but good things about the Vandalia gathering this year. I'm glad they were able to be back in person as well. We're all so happy to be back uh, to having in-person events again. Uh, speaking of in-person events, we just announced four more shows for this summer that are going to be in Charleston at the Culture Center Theater. Those shows are on sale right now to our Mountain Stage members, uh, and they will go on sale to the public this Friday at 10 a.m. 
uh, Ray Wiley Hubbard, Mary Gaucher, Dust Bowl Revival, Sophie B. Hawkins uh, are all in the lineup. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can always check out mountainsage.org. Uh, also, some more exciting news that I can't uh, talk about just yet. <laughs> it has nothing to do with uh, Dolly Parton. Um, we do have some exciting news coming up about Mountain Sage. Our 40th anniversary is right on the corner. We're going to have two shows to celebrate our 39th anniversary. One of those is going to be in Boston, Massachusetts at the oh, Berkeley wow. Performance Center with Roseanne Cash. So that will be a big deal. And then we're going to come back and have our 39th anniversary celebration part two. Uh, in the Culture Center Theater, and we've confirmed a major act that's going to do an extended set for us. Uh, and this artist doesn't play to 400 seat venues very often, so I'm excited about that. I hope we're going to sell out. That's in December, so there's a lot of competition going on with Nutcrackers and uh, uh, Christmas pageants and all of such. But I think we'll do a good job. And then episode 1000 is right around the corner. It's going to be October the 9th. Uh, We've got a couple things confirmed. I'm trying to get that lineup completed, and uh, we may work with Christy to make sure we market this properly uh, because we'll market that as a live event, and then, of course, when the show goes out on radio to our 280 stations this fall. So that's, that's a big landmark. Um, it was originally when Larry Gross was going to step away, uh, and that was supposed to be in July of 2020. So we're getting there about two years later than we originally intended. Uh, but uh, the show has done nothing but grow since last July or July two years ago, and I'm uh, really proud of the work that everybody's been able to do to get uh, back in action here. We have a team of about 25 people, I like to remind you, that work every Mountain Stage show. Uh, they get that done. And uh, most of those are day of show employees, they're contract employees, and their loyalty is unmatched. We have an amazing crew. Uh, they can't be rattled. Um, but they can age. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're currently working and with the endorsement of the legislature and helping us with our line item we're going to be able to train more people we're going to have a better in-depth uh, ability to help pass this knowledge on so that we don't find ourselves in an unreconcilable situation I'm sure. happy to answer any questions talk with you guys around lunch whatever what happened to the Kansas it's happening. Oh, it's oh yeah. Happening? Yeah, we're going back. We're going to Pittsburgh, Kansas in October. That's not announced yet. We've got a road show in Harrisonburg, Virginia in September that we're about to announce. Uh, those are based on, you know, the universities that are hosting us. So we work with them in coordination because we're often a part of a series uh, when that happens. And that's the case in Harrisonburg in September. And then uh, we're going to Pittsburgh, Kansas in October. They've got a wonderful state-of-the-art venue out there that they're anxious to show off. Uh, so happy to help them do that. And there's a new president of the university there who's ready to tell the world about Pittsburgh, Kansas, and we're happy to help uh, spread that word. And um, <clears throat> I hope with the support of the friends, we're going to have a presence at the PRPD Content Conference, the public radio program directors, and these are really the people who have picked up our show in the last two years. Um, and FaceTime at this conference has been invaluable over the years, I think, both in helping us get that carriage, but in also helping us maintain it. And we're going to be a major sponsor of one of the days. We're going to have a networking session with Kathy Matea on site, uh, and that'll be in New Orleans uh, at the end of September, or um, the end of August, early September. And then we'll have a showcase of some sort at the Americana Conference in Nashville this year. Uh, that's in September as well. We're going to be all over the place this fall. And I hope that that, again, is setting the stages for something in Nashville based on our 40th anniversary. So fingers crossed we uh, continue to build those relationships. And I do have already a, a, lot of, a lot more road shows in the works for West Virginia and a few other venues throughout the state. So we're going to be going to different parts of the state, not just around the, around the country. We like to go when we're invited. Uh, and so when stations reach out, you know, we like to, to accept those invitations if it's at all possible. Um, but we also want to make sure everybody remembers that there's a lot of great venues in West Virginia. Uh, and we're going to have lots of great celebrations at our home in the Culture Center. So at Vandalia, we talked about Ambassadors Camp. For, for those of you who don't know what Ambassadors Camp is, we bring two eighth graders, one into ninth grade, from each county. This is the first year that we're actually having to meet on a Sunday because we have three camps where we haven't had for the last two years. And we're going to bring the kids, 110 kids, over to Mountain Stage uh, June 19th in the balcony and they'll be rowdy. <laughs> well, it can't start them young enough. That's right. Classical music. Actually. <laughs> actually. We are 
already hit that kid up for a sustaining membership. <laughs> 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 I had to watch it when I was in eighth grade. And my grandmother didn't have any of them. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, everybody. Marilyn DeVita. I'm Marilyn. Marilyn, have a chat with us about the development operation. Yes. Um, well, the good news is that we're seeing rising revenue uh, numbers in May. Uh, and that means we expect to hit or see last year's membership revenue. Looking kind of dicey back in March and April, but we're we're ahead now when we finish the month. I just got the word thirty-eight thousand dollars, so we made up our deficit and came ahead, which is always good. And make no um, mistake about it, the addition of Christie is really making a difference because getting out in front of people and letting them see us and be seen, it was, it was great. The Downton event, I think, went over well. The new movie is great. And uh, the, uh, of course, the Vandalia event. Uh, just have so many people come up. I think Eddie only had one person fill this year with uh, a couple points. But yeah, we're, I mean, we're getting to know these people because they're Familiar to us now when they say their name. <laughs> um, the name. The marketing effort by Christie is going to take a lot, which asks us to look at venues in every city of license that we have. So we're not going to be Charleston centric. We can start East this year. We're going around the state, and we're going to ask the friends at their meeting, uh, probably be about $30,000. On the, the number keeps raising, so you know you have to have giveaways and things like that. But the wonderful thing about the friends is they realize the cultivation of people that come to these events and enjoy seeing us out there are the hotbed for getting them to make a donation for something they get for free. And that's always the challenge. Uh, underwriting is seeing an uptick, so that's good news as well. Um, Annie is back, and she and Todd are really hitting it hard. The uh, website upgrade that Liz has been doing uh, with um, Butch is helping. Uh, the underwriting has updated their information on the web, which is important for what they do. And I think Kathleen is, has worked with her about our membership information, too. So really being able to go to the website and get information is really important. The Friends elections ended at 11.59 p.m. last night. The uh, nominating committee will be in on Thursday to go over the results. But we had some hotly contested areas and uh, some that we can probably tell you who the winners are already. But that'll be it for the committee. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Thank you, Marilyn. Americo Valdez is our, uh, you met him at the last meeting. He's our new uh, director of our grants program. And um, Ted gave him a little bit of an in introduction earlier to you, but Americo, if you could update us on what you've been doing. Yes. Um, so since I was here last time, anybody who's walked into my office and some stacks and stacks of I was, you know, making uh, sense out of all the grants. You know, grants are actually quite simple. You have fiscal and you have programmatic aspects of grants. And fiscally, uh, we are not that much changed since March, about $525,000, uh, which that number will adjust down as we invest more and spend more, especially in our MACP uh, grant. Um, looking in future, we want to be seeking more grants that align with uh, a lot of what you've heard, what you Eddie talking about, how we adjust for the future. Uh, you know, programmatically, uh, finding a lot of really good performance metrics, uh, just in interacting with a lot of the staff. Uh, I see that we've had 
you know, our podcasts were 9,392 downloads per month, and they went up a year later over 27,000. And these are organic results. And the uh, private sector, you pay for that. Uh, these are opportunities that we are finding uh, just by measuring the performance of our programs. Uh, and I look to establish more metrics so that we can find these opportunities and uh, spread them out through our program. So, um, also by the end of uh, June, we're looking to have the 25 stories uh, ready uh, for the MACP Hope Waves project. And um, we are also made an investment. Uh, we are starting a marketing uh, contract to you know, better, better position uh, that program. Uh, so I'll have more to report on that uh, next time we meet. Uh, there's going to be a lot of research uh, in our audience and what's working, as well as our digital presence. So uh, these are the types of things that you know, we're looking to scale out to our other productions uh, and, of course, align ourselves for future improvements. Questions? Thank you, America. Thanks. Eric Douglas is our news director. Eric, bring us up to speed. Uh, thanks. Um, Eddie's keeping me on track. As, <laughs> as usual. Uh, so, we've got several things going on in the news department. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we lost a, a reporter a couple weeks ago. The upside to it is she actually went to the show 1A, which we air at 2 o'clock, the national show w, uh, that comes from WAMU. So that's a feather in our cap that they came and poached one of our one of our employees. I'm still mad at her about it, but uh, <laughs> I told her that over the weekend when I happened to run into her at Vandalia. But anyway, I'm, I'm joking. That was June Leffler. She our, was our athletes and health news reporter. Did a fantastic job for us. So very, I hope very soon we'll be uh, uh, advertising that position. Uh, we also just, and I'm going to let him speak in a second, but we've hired Bill Lynch um, as our uh, uh, producer for uh, Inside Appalachia. Uh, Bill has been with us, what, 18 years, 20 years, something like that, as, as an on-air voice? Nine, 21 years. Uh, but he was also, we, we ended up poaching him away from uh, the, the, the newspaper here in town. Uh, uh, but he's now with us full time, And but I'll, I'll let him talk here in a second. A quick note about uh, Inside Appalachia. Rocky Todd also left. She has uh, been with us about eight years, but Bill is, is quickly learning his way about find, uh, about the, the show and how to get it moving. Um, but this, uh, everybody was talking about anniversaries. This is actually the 20th anniversary. August will be the 20th anniversary that Inside Appalachia has been in the year. Uh, August 3rd will be that, that episode. So uh, we're, we're hoping to promote that and have some fun with that as well. We've got a couple of, a couple of big projects going on in the news department. It, for the last couple months between the legislative session being shorthanded, a lot of it was just day-to-day -day playing, you know, playing catch-up. But now we're getting a little more solidified. We do have a new assistant news director who will be joining us at the end of the month. Uh, Caroline McGregor is a really interesting person. She was able to stop by and visit us last week. I, part of the reason I kind of laugh is Caroline was actually born in Ireland, uh, raised in South Africa, been here about 20 years, been in, in the United States about 20 years, working at both um, commercial and public broadcasting uh, radio stations around the country. So she brings a really interesting wealth of experience, and it'll be fun to have a South African accent on our air. Right? <laughs> we, if you remember, uh, Jesse Wright, our, our former news director, was also from South Africa. So it's not actually the first time we've had a South African accent on our air. But uh, I, I'm looking forward to having her in the office and helping out around the <coughs> office. But well, we've got a couple of big projects. Um, uh, Chris and June, Chris Schultz and, and June, who left, uh, did a, a two stories on medical marijuana in the state, that, how that's all progressing. Uh, Chris and, and uh, Randy Yowie are working on a big project on um, dog racing in, in the state. As of, I think actually today, or within a few days, West Virginia is the only state now that still does dog racing in the country. Um, 
and so they're, they're, they've, they've actually gotten great access into both uh, the, the Crawl Science dog track and the Wheeling dog track, talk to the people who run it all, and so later this month, later in June, we'll actually probably have a three or four story uh, series on dog racing in the, in the state and, and all that's going on. So really looking forward to hearing that one year. Um, they've really been given tremendous access, more so than I anticipated when, when we started talking about the project. You know. But I, actually, like I said, I'd like to let Bill introduce himself. Uh, you, you've all heard Bill's voice on, on his Lost Highway show and, and our uh, uh, late morning yeah. air for a long time. I've been, I've been the guy, the card reader, and uh, reading the weather on his mornings for years. I've had lost highways for about six or seven years. Uh, but probably I'm better known for my work at the newspaper where I attended feature stories and entertainment pieces, arts, culture, food, things that kind of really apply themselves to something like in my Appalachia. Um, excited about being here. It's, it's, a, it's a interesting. Just thinking about when I started in 2001. I started September 17, 2001. So it was a kind of an odd time, right? Everything had kind of gone nuts right afterwards. And I kind of came in uh, just as things were kind of picking up pieces and starting over. Uh, and in some ways, maybe that's what it feels like right now. But we are where we are in the pandemic. And after several years of crisis and lockdown, of moving back away from that, We're moving back, I guess, hopefully to normalcy and uh, brighter days. So um, that is kind of, I guess, my hope for Inside Appalachia is to uh, keep it the, the program that we're all proud of and, you know, also make it. So, anyway, any questions for me? I can attempt to answer them, but, you know, two weeks on my head for me to figure out what to do. Now, Eric took my, stole my thunder. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> but thank you, Matt. I mean, I mean, Bill. And you have to understand that I was making introductions not long after I got here, and uh, I introduced Bill as Matt, and uh, I got a I got a look. <laughs> uh, but I think we've gotten to know each other just a little bit yeah. since then. I, that that mistake will never happen, and if it does, then it's early onset. <laughs> Time for me to go. But uh, we're really excited to have Bill here. He's he's been around a long time, and um, I'm excited about the energy that I know he's going to bring to inside Appalachia. And, um, you know, 20 years in the, in the making, and and more and more stations across Appalachia are, are picking us up and. And uh, I'm convinced that he's the guy that takes the program to the next level. So we're really excited about Bill Lynch. It's interesting when you, when you hear the, when you see the literature in the folkways community, the Appalachian Studies type community, how often they cite inside Appalachia as a, as a tool, as a reference. Um, so it is extreme. I mean, it's extremely well regarded as a radio show and a, as a podcast, but it's extremely well regarded in the academic circles or the people who study Appalachian studies as well. So it, it's definitely not something to, to take for granted. Uh, just one, uh, one last thing I just remember too, uh, both us and them and uh, Inside Appalachia won regional borough awards just last week. Uh, we just got that notification. Those will now be placed in the running for national borough awards. We'll find out that I think the end of July, 1st of August. Sometime in that range, if you recall, we won uh, two national Murrow awards last year, one for us and them, and one for, um, uh, it wasn't inside that last one, but I can't remember what that other story was. But in, anyway, so we won a couple of those, and then later this month, we'll also find out if we won first or second from the Public Media Journalist Association awards for the Cold on the Way Forward series we did. So uh, lots of good stuff happening in the news department, and we keep cranking them in. Any questions? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jared. Right. Maggie Holly, our education director. Hi, everyone. You can stand up. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the biggest of the running. Okay. Every time we have a um, So much has happened since uh, the last time we had a meeting. Me and my curriculum specialist, no, education specialist, Autumn, we find ourselves saying that we have the best job ever, 
We uh, get to travel around supporting students, supporting educators all over the Mountain State, and that is what we have been doing. Every, it seems like when people come up to the third floor, we are not here because our schedule has been completely booked. Since the last time you saw us, we wrapped up our annual Riders Contest, and we were able to bring all of those students together. We had so many submissions. We had to have help from other people in the building getting through those, and we brought those winning riders to the Culture Center, and we had a great celebration uh, several Saturdays ago. Uh, the building was about 80 people. People were calling saying, can grandparents come? Can aunts and uncles come? And we were like, sure, bring them all. And we got additional tables, and we thank you so much for allowing us to use that facility. It was beautiful. They, got, they went down to the museum afterward, and there were so many compliments. Uh, we celebrated those students and those writers, and they had a blast. One of the winners, normally we take one of the stories and we do an animation. This year, we were very fortunate that one of the stories didn't quite fit an animation, but we made a short film. The student traveled here from, I believe it was the Hinton area, and we went up to the fourth floor and she got to experience the cameras and the sound and worked with the producers and the directors and we made a full day of it and she got to turn her story and her illustrations into a complete short film. Uh, her co-actor, Mr. Eddie Eisen, <laughs> and um, during the award ceremony we broadcast it up on the television screens and everybody there got to watch it and it was a comedy and she acted so well and you can kind of tell at the beginning very shy, and by the end of it, it just brought something out in her, and the family member that came with her that day just said what an experience this was. Not only did it encourage her to continue writing, and I heard that from a lot of parents that day, but they just, it just encouraged them to continue writing. Uh, we had guest uh, authors from West Virginia. We had a guest uh, musician from West Virginia that entertained that day. It was just an overall wonderful experience, and I'm so glad that we got to do that for students across the state. My team is amazing, my education team, and we have sat down and met and identified what our goals are. And our main goal is, as a lot of us have said, getting our word out there. It's one thing to talk about how awesome my job is and all the things we get to do, but if people don't know what it is that we do, then that doesn't help anybody. As we go out and we do things like Above and Beyond, which is sponsored from the state treasurer, or I go out, we've been in a lots of classrooms since I saw you last, teaching things like with seeds and nature cats um, and wild crafts with animal adaptations, looking at fossils that we bring in. And a lot of people will say, well, I just didn't know you guys did this until someone brought in the flyer. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. We, you know, we want to bring joy and hope and fun into the kids' lives and give the teachers a little bit of a, a break or some more enjoyment. Um, we want that outreach. And the more that we do that on social media and they see our faces on Twitter and Instagram and on the commercials that we put on, we've been getting huge amounts of demand. So we are going to the American Federation of Teachers Conference. Uh, just yesterday, we are invited to go to the uh, West Virginia Readers, Conf Readers Association Conference. We are going to the um, Elementary and Middle School Pr Principals Association Conference later this year. We had a table at the State Social Studies Fair. We're just getting invited to go to all these places where we can meet and uh, interact with all these educators. Uh, we are going to work with some of the summer schools that are going on this year, and today, at the end of the day, we're going over. We were at the new opening of the Town County Library, so now we're going to be part of their 100 Days celebration. So there's just a, a lot of fun things going on, and people want us to be a part of the things that they're doing, and we're just very proud of that. So our year is getting booked up very, very quickly. Um, we're, we've already been invited to go to Marshall, um, University of Charleston um, and several others this fall to go in and, and 
talk to some of their new teachers programs. So um, we're just very happy that our calendars are getting both done. Any questions? Oh, and we have a grant. We're writing the grant from um, Merico uh, that was mentioned from Mr. Gallagher. So uh, we've been busy, busy working on the grant and homework hotline, getting that back renewed and on the air. Any other questions for Maggie? Thank you so much. Butcher, Eddie, could you get the film that she's talking about? Send that to us so we can see it on our computer. It's so funny. We want to see it. It's a cooking show. The girl wrote uh, it's an informal cooking show. You can find out what he's really doing. Well, <laughs> Julia Child may not be here, but. You could be the successor. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really good. And the little girl had a great time. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have one more thing I'd like to add, and then that will be the end of the report today. Um, as you can see, there's some amazing people in this room. Um, I believe they're amazing. So, um, I would like to thank Brian Gallagher and, and the Friends of Public Broadcasting. Um, They've really stepped in um, and have assisted um, in a number of ways. And, and one of the things that, that I know is a priority for Brian and the friends is his um, supporting training and development for our staff. And, and we're very fortunate at public broadcasting to have that, that private fundraising arm um, that can provide that, those opportunities for us. And, and I just wanted to... Uh, say it one more time that um, I think it's critical, and um, it's it's really um, it's really a, a feather on our cap to have that opportunity to be able to you know keep people up to speed and to provide training and certifications when we need it. So Brian, thank you again. That's that's my report, sir. Thank you, Butch. Uh, anybody have any questions of Butch? If not. But it's uh, great having you on board. We look forward to a number of years working with you in the future. Um, you mentioned energy. I think that's what we see here. The, the new people we have, the new hires uh, mixed in with those who have got a lot of experience here, I think has brought a, a new level of energy, and, and that's exciting to all of us. So we thank you and, uh, and commend you for the, for the hires you made. And, and those that are here, though, we appreciate those who have been here for a number of years. And Bill Lynch, you've got a lot of pressure on you. You heard it. <laughs> it's up to you. So. Well, I would I would like to say, you know, the hiring process is it's, it's a difficult at best. <laughs> and um, I'm the curator's sitting right here because I'm I'm he's got to be plenty tired of me by now. Oh. Um, and you know, he just he helped oh, yeah. he really helped us. But um, to have the team to do the interviews. You know, um, Eddie and, and Christina Dodd, um, you know, they were part of that team. And um, I can tell you, I would probably never want to hire anyone else without having a team of people in the interviews because it just, um, it, I think it takes the, the pressure off. And um, I don't think that we've had one hire in, in the folks that we've, that we've employed here that we all didn't agree upon at the end, and, and and I think that's very important. And those people distinguish themselves, and you look around the room and, and you see why. Thank you. Thank you, and, and we do thank the curator for all, all of your efforts. Your office, you've been great to work with, and I, and I think public broadcasting is on the right track. So I don't think it's going to be a... Uh, Necessary to have an executive session. We have that on the agenda, but uh, do you, Butch, have anything no. you want to bring up? No. Um, I don't have anything. Do you, Mike, do you have anything? I do not. Okay. Do. Okay, Curator, we will go on, you want to run executive yeah. Okay, we will be going into the executive session. Uh, we'll need a motion to do so. Before we do that, um, there will be no action taken, and then once we come out, we will adjourn and have lunch. Um, I know that lunch is going to be on the second floor. Um, and then the foundation meeting will begin right now. It's scheduled at 1230. Maybe we can move it up to 1215.
uh, we'll see if we can adjust it because we're going to have some time between the two meetings. Um, and with that, we thank all the new staff for being here today and those that have been here with us for a while. Uh, the reports were, were very interesting, informative, and, and, and I hope we can continue doing that. It, it's great knowing what's going on in the organization. Uh, so at this time, I will ask for a, a motion uh, to go into executive session. So moved. And second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the same. We are going into executive session.
Okay, I believe that's uh, that's everyone. We will uh, go back into regular session. I've asked for a motion to come out of the executive session and to resume our, our so regular moved. Uh, All in favor say aye. Aye. Both the same. We are back in regular session. Uh, we just concluded the executive session. Uh, no motions were made. No actions were taken in that session. Um, this time, does anybody have anything else they'd like to bring up before the authority this morning? If not, uh, our next meeting will be September the 7th. It'll be here in 600 Capitol Street. And thank you all very much for coming. And Mike and I thank you for the confidence you have one more time for, for us to serve. Um, and if there's nothing further, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. We are adjourned.